protests across China, Peng Lifai reappears in Xi'an, Hunan advocates tank for rights. From CEO to street vendor, how a once thriving brand lost 10 million in two years. CCP's exaggerated reporting of Taiwan earthquake sparks backlash among mainland citizens. Expert analysis of Biden she call, White House controls CCP with two hands. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Protests across China, Peng Lifai reappears in Xi'an, Hunan advocates tank for rights. On April 3, Nenis and Wai Gangzing posted two photos on X platform, claiming that on the evening of April 2, a brave individual, likely a long-distance cyclist, attached a piece of paper to the rear package of his bicycle with the message Xi Jinping should apologize to all humanity. Concerns were raised for this individual, and they sought detailed information. From the photos, a young man wearing a helmet is seen riding a bicycle, with bags on both sides of the rear seat and two packages tied to the back, each with a piece of paper bearing the words Xi Jinping should apologize to all humanity. On the same day, Nenison Luoxiang posted a video on X platform showing a red off-road vehicle parked outside a Great Wall Motors dealership advocating for rights, with two banners reading Lifetime Quality Guarantee, Pure Nonsense, and Support Domestic Products, Tears Flowing. Great Wall Motors is the abbreviation for Great Wall Motors Company, Limited, formerly known as Great Wall Industrial Company, a collectively owned enterprise. Luoxiang jokes, another supporter of domestic products in China, hit by the iron fist. Tank, advocating for rights. Here's my advice, the best way to support domestic products is to buy a domestic car and keep it at home. Burn incense sooner or later. Also, buy a joint venture or imported car for daily use. Netizens commented on the video, recognizing the car as the Great Wall Tank 300 and noting the suppression of negative news by Great Wall Motors. Some shared negative experiences with domestic car purchases, while others advised against buying domestic cars, citing collusion with authorities and media. In recent years, China's economy has been in decline, leading to stricter control by the Chinese Communist Party over its citizens. This has sparked growing discontent among the populace, resulting in ongoing protests. The most prominent event was Peng Lifa hanging a banner on Beijing's Sidong Bridge in 2022 to protest against CCP leader Xi Jinping. He was later arrested during the protest and is still being held in secret detention by the CCP authorities. Nevertheless, his actions have inspired similar protests across the country since then. On January 30 of this year, a video circulated online capturing a red sedan displaying a large cardboard sheet with slogans condemning fascism, advocating for people's freedoms, and denouncing judicial corruption. Below these slogans were statements like the CCP can't avoid its downfall. Acknowledging the central authority's weakening, I can take effective action. These remarks directly highlight the party's collapsing situation and its leader's diminishing influence. In another case, on February 21, 2023, just before the CCP's two sessions, slogans saying down with the Communist Party, down with Xi Jinping, were projected onto Wanda Plaza's exterior wall in Jinan, Shandong Province. Chai Song, who orchestrated the event, explained in an interview with NTD TV that he drew inspiration from Peng Lifa. While traveling in Central and South America, he remotely activated a projector in a rented apartment displaying the slogans on Wanda Plaza. Chai Song expressed his hope that his actions could influence some Chinese people to realize that Chinese people are not equivalent to the Chinese Communist Party, and the Chinese Communist Party does not represent the Chinese people. He also disclosed that his friend, involved in filming the projection, faced CCP suppression, with more than 50 people going to her house to arrest her that night. After moving to the United States, Chai Song kept quiet about the incident for a year. However, realizing his silence didn't help his friends, who remain unreachable, he decided to share the story publicly, believing that more attention could ensure their safety. From CEO to street vendor, how a once thriving brand lost 10 million in two years. Mainland Chinese internet famous milk tea shops have been chasing after trends in recent years, experiencing barbaric growth as both capital and entrepreneurs flock to the tea beverage industry. 
However, at the beginning of 2024, several once-once thriving top-tier milk tea brands were exposed to massive closures and store shutdowns. Recently, the founder of a popular internet-famous milk tea shop admitted to her entrepreneurial failure, revealing how she lost 10 million yuan, approximately 1.4 million US dollars, in two years. Xia Yao, the founder of Yuan Jinjin, recently shared her experience of entrepreneurial failure on social media. She experienced a roller coaster ride over five years, going from a peak of 300 nationwide stores to now having all directly operated stores closed, with only over 20 franchise stores remaining. She lost 10 million in two years. She lamented her situation, going from 42 years old, with a debt of 2 million to from CEO to street vendor. In 2019, Xia Yao opened the first Yuan Jinjin in Chengdu with an investment of 500,000 yuan, around 70,000 US dollars. Riding the popularity of bubble milk tea, she emphasized handcrafted bubbles and quickly became an internet sensation. However, due to poor equity management, she missed out on venture capital opportunities. In 2020, Yuan Jinjin began franchising, rapidly expanding to nearly 300 stores nationwide by 2021. But a failed brand upgrade and issues with scaling led to closures and losses. Now, Xia Yao and her remaining employee operate a street stall, selling street vendor milk tea and starting over with a new brand. Xia Yao's story is not unique. In early 2024, several top tier milk tea brands, including sub-brands of Nayuki's Tea and Fu Xiaotao, faced closures. These closures reflect the challenges faced by the industry, including fierce competition, poor management, and changing consumer preferences. Similarly, internet-famous cake shops are also struggling. Panda Can't Leave Cake recently closed its stores in 24 cities, leaving employees unpaid and customers and suppliers unpaid. The closures highlight the challenges of maintaining success in the face of market saturation and changing consumer demands. CCP's exaggerated reporting of Taiwan earthquake sparks backlash among mainland citizens. On April 3, the earthquake struck Hualien, Taiwan, shaking the entire island. By 6.30 p.m., the death toll reached 9, with 934 injured and 56 still trapped. Misli, a Chinese tourist in Taichung, Taiwan, described feeling the tremors and witnessing items falling during the quake. She noted that her building remained calm, with no special instructions from the landlord. Similarly, Ms. Qin, from Xinchu, Taiwan, recounted experiencing strong shaking and furniture moving during the quake. Despite feeling dizzy, she and others in her building remained indoors, while students and workers evacuated to open spaces. Despite this, the Chinese state media CCTV live-streamed coverage of the earthquake in Taiwan, stating that besides Fujian, where the tremors were strong, Shanghai, Zhujiang, Jiangsu, Jiangxi, and other regions also felt the tremors. They even quoted netizens leaving comments under the official Weibo of the China Earthquake Administration, saying, the entire community in Xiamen ran out. According to publicly available data on Baidu from mainland China, the straight line distance between Taiwan and Fujian is about 130 kilometers, while Shanghai is roughly 839 kilometers away from Taiwan, and Zhujiang is 740 kilometers away. The earthquake occurred in Taiwan, causing tremors in parts of China, especially in coastal areas closer to Taiwan. Mr. Dai from Xiamen, Fujian, told the Epoch Times that he lives on the 10th floor of a high-rise apartment building. He felt noticeable tremors but didn't panic or leave home because earthquakes have occurred many times in Taiwan before. He also mentioned that most residents in his community reacted similarly and were not as panicked as described by official media. However, in Shanghai, the paper reported on the tremors felt in Shanghai due to the Taiwan earthquake and interviewed mainland experts on the reasons for Shanghai's tremors, citing the soft soil foundation in Shanghai that could amplify tremors. But Mr. Wang from Shanghai told the Epoch Times, I didn't feel the tremors from the Taiwan earthquake, and neither did my surrounding friends. He criticized the media for exaggerating the situation, suggesting that the Chinese Communist Party tends to withhold information from its citizens. In contrast to mainland Chinese perceptions, 
Ms. Chin emphasized that the response to the earthquake was swift, with minimal casualties compared to what might have occurred on the mainland due to Taiwan's superior building quality. Reflecting on the differences, netizens praised Taiwan's construction quality, citing examples like the Tian Wangxing building in Hualien, which remains standing despite the quake, in stark contrast to the devastation witnessed in mainland China's Wenchuan 8.0 magnitude earthquake of 2008, which left hundreds of thousands dead and severe school building collapses. Expert analysis of Biden Xi call, White House controls CCP with two hands. U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping held a telephone conversation on Tuesday, April 2. Many experts agree that the Taiwan Strait issue will be the focus of this meeting, mainly in response to possible changes in Taiwan's new president's inauguration speech and the U.S. election. The South China Sea dispute is also a major background. This is the first direct phone call since the meeting with Xi in November last year. Analysts believe that the White House maintains a two-pronged approach to control the CCP. On the one hand, it sets an encirclement of the CCP, and on the other hand, it strengthens communication to prevent the CCP from counterattacking and causing unnecessary losses. On Taiwan and the South China Sea, the White House said President Biden emphasized the importance of maintaining peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait and the rule of law and freedom of navigation in the South China Sea to China during the phone call. The Chinese summary of the talks mentioned that Xi Jinping said that the Taiwan issue is the first insurmountable red line in Sino-U.S. relations, and emphasized that Beijing will not tolerate external connivance and support, which alludes to U.S. support for Taiwan. He believes that the biggest variable now is Lai Qingda's inauguration speech as president on May 20, and the second one is the U.S. presidential election at the end of the year. Unless some new variables emerge in Lai Qingti's speech, or new variables emerge in the U.S. election, the situation in the Taiwan Strait will remain. During the call, Biden specifically warned Xi Jinping again not to interfere in the U.S. presidential election in November. Xin Yuzhong said that of course the United States does not want the CCP to deliberately interfere in the election, so it first expresses its concerns so that Beijing can understand the bottom line of the United States. Mr. Wang He, a China expert, told the Epoch Times on April 3 that the main reason for this meeting is Lai Qingti's upcoming presidency in Taiwan on May 20. Biden aims to stabilize relations with China, but also wants to ensure Taiwan's new leader doesn't provoke Beijing. Taiwan fears increased military threats from China during this transition. Additionally, the U.S., Japan, and the Philippines Another source of tension is U.S. restrictions on exporting advanced technology to China, aimed at curbing Beijing's military advancements. Xi Jinping criticized these measures, warning of retaliation if the U.S. persists. Biden also raised concerns about China's cyber attacks and unfair trade practices during the call. Following this, Treasury Secretary Yellen will visit China, indicating continued economic pressure. Experts suggest the U.S. views China as a competitor and seeks to understand its strategy, but tensions remain high, especially regarding technology and national security. U.S.-China relations remain pivotal globally, with future developments depending on factors like the U.S. election and policy changes. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.